This is the top of the new Toyota Tundra range, the TRD Pro. The most powerful, best equipped, and most capable Tundra ever from Toyota. But does that mean it's good enough to tackle some of the best from the States? First, we're gonna start on the road and talk about what this thing is like to drive in reality where it's gonna spend the vast majority of its life. And then we'll head to Road America and find out how it does doing the TRD Pro part of this Tundra TRD Pro. The big story here is that everything is new for this truck. For this year, it's riding on a new, stronger, lighter, and more rigid chassis. It's got a new powertrain, a new transmission, and a new rear end suspension architecture. So we've got a lot to talk about. Now one of the more interesting things that we have here is, I think, the powertrain. We do have the iForce Max engine here, which we didn't have in the Limited that we drove earlier. And what that means is it takes the same 3.5 liter twin turbocharged V6 from that truck, but it adds a hybrid component. So now you're probably saying to yourself, well, okay, it's got a hybrid component, it's probably super economical and great fuel economy, right? No, not exactly. The average that we've just done, and we've done about 15 miles of towing, we've done about 80 to 100 miles of highway, and the rest of this basically full tank of gas that we've burned, we've been returning 15.6 mpg, which is less than the 17.4 that we got from the Raptor, and we've been being a lot nicer to this thing's throttle pedal than we were to the Raptor. So, if you were thinking that you were gonna get great fuel economy from this powertrain, not exactly, but what you do get is some very good power. This iForce Max engine puts out a whopping 437 horsepower and get this, 583 pound-feet of torque. And you can feel it. We towed my parents' boat downtown and back and under power, you could hardly tell we were towing anything. This thing is crazy powerful, but it won't stop shouting fake V8 noise at you through the cabin speakers. The question that's always on my mind when I think about a hybrid truck is, how is the transmission going to deal with the transition, get it, between electric and gas? How smooth could it possibly be transitioning from having the engine on to turning off to going into seventh gear or 10th gear or fourth or whatever it is? How smooth could it actually be? I think I'll answer that question putting it this way. I had to look for places that the truck would thunk around. The electric engagement is really smooth and then the engine comes in and you can really hardly tell whether you're just hanging around cruising in eco mode or whether you're really beating on it in sport mode. It's really not noticeable. It's more noticeable when the turbo spools than when the engine cuts in and out. And all that's to say that the new 10-speed transmission fits here very, very nicely. It works better than the Ford Power Boost 10-speed and it's smoother than the LX, which has the same engine and same gearbox here. Steering is pretty numb and the turning circle is pretty atrocious, but what did you expect? This is a big truck on Falcon Wild Peak all-terrain tires. But then, that brings me to the last major structural change for this generation. And we're talking about the rear suspension. No more leaf springs. We keep the solid rear axle, but we go for a multi-link setup in the back, with of course, this being the TRD Pro, you get Fox shocks. Now, they're not the electronic controlled ones, they're more of a static rate, but they are a uh, piggyback or, you know, I guess not quite remote, but a piggyback reservoir for the rear end. I'm also gonna compare this thing to the Raptor one more time, since this also has a multi-link rear suspension with Fox shocks. What it results in is this is the best riding Tundra I've ever driven, but it's not quite Raptor. And with that said, I'm not sure it's fair to be comparing this to a Raptor. The trucks both start near 70 grand, but the Tundra comes decked out at that price, where the Raptor is going to need another $10,000 or so to make it comparable to the Toyota. However, with both trucks coming in with a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 engine, making over 400 horsepower and 500 pound-feet of torque, both trucks being off-road ready and both trucks having very similar suspension philosophy and hardware, it's hard not to make the comparison. And whether it's fair or not, I'll probably do a studio piece revisiting the comparison after this video. So the question we've all been asking is, is this a Raptor fighter? Is it not? And there's a lot of ways that that can be determined, but what you need to know here, at least on the road, is that the engine is wildly powerful, the transmission is very smooth, the ride is pretty good, not perfect, but pretty good, the cabin is pretty refined and quiet, and it's probably exactly what the Tundra needed to be to compete with the Americans. So with that, let's head into the forest. Heading into the forest, what you're wanting is something that is small and agile enough that can navigate some tighter trails, as well as something that can keep traction if you need to carefully navigate over rocks and ruts. This Tundra comes with a 1.1 inch suspension lift in the front and an ELSD on both axles and a rear locker. 
It's got a pretty crap turning circle, but it didn't seem to be a problem in these forests. Next we come to the hills. The hills here, what you're watching out for is power, approach, departure, and breakover. But it's also a good time to test the trail cams and hill descent. You don't want to break traction if you can help it, but we'll keep the diff unlocked for this one. This is where we're testing articulation. The stress will be on the new TNGAF chassis for rigidity, the new rear end suspension for travel, and the multi-terrain select system and locking rear diff to keep power going to the wheels that are on the ground. Ultimately, and I hate to perpetuate the comparison, but this thing performed almost identically to the Raptor only bottoming out due to the breakover angle on the second and third hill. All other obstacles were not a problem, but let's step outside. This thing's pretty huge, and the personality that goes along with it from an exterior perspective is also pretty huge. This is the TRD Pro, and there's absolutely no mistaking it from outside the truck. You have these TRD accoutrement pieces up on your hood, kind of similar to how you would with a Raptor. You've got your Toyota Heritage grill, except it's been widened and enlarged and it's just massive. And then all of your marker lights, your three ambers in your grill, there's TRD back there. All of your marker lights on your wheel fenders, there's TD, TRD in there. There's no mistaking that this is a TRD vehicle. Now you do have your quadruple beam um, projectors in here. You see the hardware in there. We talked about that on Limited. You have nice running lights. And then one of the most specific things to the TRD Pro Tundra is the fact that you get this TRD light bar. Now you have to turn the headlights all the way on um, high beams on and then there's a button that you can turn the actual light bar itself on so it is a bit of a faff to do but you can do it now one of the interesting details down here by your uh, your I guess they're your fog lights uh, but they're just no more white LEDs but you have all of this detail and this etching in your black plastic so that continues around the body come around here and it's on your wheel arch as well uh, it's just kind of interesting. It's like a, well, not exactly like a digital camo, but kind of. But down here, when we start talking about the wheel, this is where the comparison towards the Raptor versus this thing starts to lose a little bit of steam. This is a 33 inch Falcon Wild Peak all-terrain tire. So it is an all-terrain tire. You've got a little heavier sidewall uh, and it's gonna be more durable for the trails. However, at a 33 inch rather than the 35 that you would get standard in the Raptor and then the 37 option on the Raptor, it's not exactly the same. Now you do get these really nice TRD BBS forged matte black aluminum wheels. Very, very nice. You have a pro logo down there and they're all muddy because, well, we went off road as one should. And then down the side of the body, um, important thing to note, you only get the super crew configuration and you only get the five and a half foot bed. That's pretty, pretty standard along all of these like high performance trucks, uh, high performance off-road trucks. You get black wing mirrors, you get black A-pillar, there's a zero cost option to get tow mirrors. They look kind of silly, but these are good enough. Uh, you do have these black, they kind of remind me of the old Tundra. They're very plasticky uh, door handles. But what we have down here, or what we don't have down here, I should say, is running boards. And that's really nice. It maximizes your ground clearance. You have a 1.1 inch lift up front, and then I believe it's 10.9 inches worth of ground clearance. So you don't have any uh, running boards hanging down and interfering with that. You do have some rock protectant specific paint down on like the last couple inches of your of your bed, uh, not your bed, but your body, just to make sure you have some little added protection. I should have mentioned up there that you also do have the silver TRD skid plate along with the red stabilizer bar. And then you do have Fox shocks here. They're a static shock. They're not the electronic controlled ones that you would get on the Raptor. But moving back here, like I said, got five and a half foot bed. And then one of the cool things about the Tundras is you can release the bed, or the tailgate rather, with this little button on the inside of, or on the outside of your uh, turn signal. It's only on the driver's side, it is not on this side. But then once we get to the bed, this is where it starts to lose some functionality uh, to the Ford and the Rams. You don't have any sort of like built-in step to get into the tailgate. So you don't have anything here. Uh, you also don't have bottle opener back here. You don't have measuring back here. Uh, it is just a tailgate. 
So when you hop in, ah, now you're in the five and a half foot bed and now you have the bed mat, which I think is like 150 or, I don't know, it's a couple hundred bucks, but I actually kind of like it. It adds a little bit more protection if you have some uh, more fragile stuff in the back here. It's a composite bed and you do have some lights, you have some tie downs, you do have your uh, bed camera back here. And importantly, you have the rear glass that goes all the way down. It's classic Toyota, you love to see it. I'm glad they have it here. I don't know that they have it in the Sequoia because we haven't had that one yet, but I like to see it here for the new generation of TRD uh, and some off-road stuff. Now, importantly, I'm gonna mention the fact that you only have a 120 volt outlet in your bed. Now, this is pretty standard. However, the thing that I love about the Fords is that you get the Pro Power, at least the option of the Pro Power, which I think at minimum is like 2000 watts, so two kilowatts. So it would be nice to have a little bit more power coming out of your bed. But other than that, your payload is 1,600 pounds. Your towing capacity is 11,000 pounds. We did tow my parents' boat. Didn't even notice it was behind the truck. I did notice a little bit under braking, but that's like 3,000 pounds dry weight. So it, it tows just fine. There's plenty of power. Let's step inside though. So then the interior of the Tundra TRD Pro. Now we did a pretty in-depth interior analysis in the Limited that we had a few weeks or months ago. Um, so we're gonna keep it fairly high level here. We're gonna talk about some of the TRD Pro specific stuff. But first I wanna address some of the issues that we had with our time with the Limited. Um, that was a very early production unit. It was still working through some issues and they fixed a lot of those here. One of the issues was um, I had an issue with the 360 camera, half the screen went green, didn't have that issue at all. Uh, I had an issue with the wireless Apple CarPlay connecting, didn't have an issue with that at all this week. And then I had an issue with the Spotify system, like not playing music right away. Um, it would say that it was playing and then just no volume. Um, didn't have an issue with that at all. So ultimately with those bugs, bugs fixed, this is a very, very good system. The tech stack overall is pretty decent. Uh, the digital cluster is a nice addition. You don't get a head up display, but for an off-road truck, I don't really feel like I need it. Uh, the driver assist system, works fairly well. Um, it does work better in some of the more unibody crossovers and sedans and those sort of things than in a body on frame truck. Uh, there's just a little bit of sawing at the wheel uh, between the lane lines and then it was losing lane lines a little bit. In terms of storage, I mean, it's a big truck. So you've got plenty of stuff. You've got uh, recessed cup holders here and then cleverly, your center console doubles as a cup holder for my emotional support water bottle, which is one of the two or three cars that now has a cup holder big enough to fit it. So that's kind of nice to see. Uh, comfort, it's pretty decent. The cabin here is noticeably smaller though than the Americans. I feel like it's, it's a bit narrower than the Raptor. And then mostly in the back seat is where I notice it. So I have a little bit less knee room. I still have a lot, but I still have a little bit less. And then mostly in terms of headroom. So they've gone and put the uh, battery pack for the hybrid underneath the rear seats. I don't know if that lifts the rear seats up a bit more, but I don't have much headroom on the left or the right, and then I have no headroom uh, in the middle. So if I sit in the middle, there's not that cutout in the roof to, for me to put my head uh, and 61, I do hit my head on the roof in the middle seat in the back. Um, you do get a panoramic roof, um, which is really nice. It brings some more air and light into here, so it feels a little bit bigger than it may actually be, but it is, it is noticeably smaller than the time we spent recently in the Raptor. In terms of TRD Pro stuff, you have the red interior here. And for those of you that have followed the channel for a while, you know that I'm not a huge fan of red. It can be done well. Um, in here, it's okay. It's kind of one of those things where I like all of the little individual treatments that they've done to the interior here. I like the red seat belt. I like the digital camo red seats. I like the stitching. I like the red dash, but all of it together feels like a bit much. Now on the solar octane, which is of course the TRD Pro specific color for this year, it's kind of an orange. Uh, you won't get the red interior, but you can get the red interior with the black, the gray, or the white that we have here. Uh, speaking of the seats, it does have TRD Pro etched into the top of the back, not the headrest, interestingly. And then they are an Arctic camo design. You know, in the limited, we had kind of that like American Gothic design. We have Arctic camo here. I don't know, maybe that's to signify the fact that this is one of the first years that we've gotten cooled seats in a Tundra. Uh, so that's kind of nice, that's kind of cool, but your different trims will give you different, uh, different patterns. You do have TRD on your steering wheel here at the bottom. You do have a red noon marker up at the top. You have a red TRD start button. You have red seat belts. You have red stitching on your black door cards. You have red soft text or leather. You have red injection molded plastic for your dash. You have a red line and a TRD on your shift knob. You have uh, Toyota stamped across your passenger side of your dash and it's rimmed in red. Like it's, it just becomes a lot 
after a little bit. So I think if it were me, I would spec a black exterior and a black interior just to kind of bring some of the subtlety back in because with the red, it does get to be a lot, at least in my opinion. But ultimately, I think this Tundra succeeds where the old Tundra failed and it, it, it succeeds where it needed to succeed for the new generation. You have a lot more modern infotainment system. You have a lot more modern amenities with a cooled seat, heated steering wheel, and that sort of stuff. You have a locking diff. You have a lot of new features and amenities that were missing previously. So now it's a little bit more, it's a lot more competitive with the Americans and the Fords and the Rams. Um, so I'm really glad to see it. There's, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better. And I think that's a good time to get into final thoughts. So the long awaited new generation of TRD Pro comes first from the Tundra. It's exactly what the old Tundra lacked, modernity. To some, it's a welcome change. To others, they've met the new model with hesitation and skepticism. I'm here to say though, wherever you fall on the spectrum, the new Tundra TRD Pro brings everything I wanted from the new truck, with one omission. I would love to see a Pro Power a generator type thing on the hybrids. And I also know that I spent a lot of time comparing this to the Raptor, but it's not exactly the intention of the Pro. Taking the Pro for what it is, it's a very solid truck and one worthy of a good long look. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.